You're 10 and 11, welcome to your comparison of the emigre and checking out my history in preparation for your AQA English Literature exam. I'll go through um, some things we might want to mention about structure in both the poems, language in both the poems, and then I'll show you my example paragraphs. Because it's a comparative essay, we need connectives. That kind of goes without saying. So please don't forget your connectives. Okay? Um, avoiding shows, not that you shouldn't use the word shows, but um, if you can use a variation that might help. There is a variation listed there, pause the video, um, note down a couple and again that will just help you in terms of varying your expression. This is the format that I always use with my students, um, but you should stick with whatever your English teacher has taught you. I tend to keep it uh, more simple, my students do tend to do very well on the poetry, so I would use something like that. But as I say, check with your English teacher first and, and follow what, what they instruct. In terms of the emigre and checking out my history then, we have two very different speakers. In the emigre we have a young girl who has been forced to leave her home and we assume this is because her country is war-torn, because there's vocabulary that is linked to the military and we get this instance of it may be sick with tyrants. And throughout the poem, she tries to cling on to a memory of something positive, this positive place and, and this positive notion of her childhood. And we know that because she references it with the word sunlight. Whereas with John Agard, it's more autobiographical because he did move. Um, he moved to the UK in the 70s. He is known for powerful performances and fun poetry but they always do have a serious message. But as I say, it's autobiographical because he did experience racial prejudice when he moved to Britain. Um, he uses non-standard phonetic spelling in this poem. And that is non-phonetic, sorry, non-standard phonetic spelling is we speak, we spell the words as we say them. And this is to represent his accent, his identity, the fact that he is proud of where he comes from and to challenge racist attitudes. In terms of structural devices then, the emigre is three stanzas. The first two stanzas are eight lines and the last has nine. So there's an extra line and this perhaps suggests that the speaker can't let go of the memories and is, is trying her best to hold on. There's this almost this theme of desperation there. The poem doesn't use rhyme and it's free verse. There's a suggestion of a rhythmic pattern of five stresses to the line. Um, although this pattern never fully establishes itself as regular because it is inconsistent in terms of the way it's used. But this could reflect the speaker's state of mind, which whilst it is positive, remains uneasy and unsettled and quite complex. Because remember in the emigre, whilst she keeps referring to this sunlight clear memory and this place that tastes like sunlight and it cannot break my original view, there is undertones of something unsettling. It may be sick with tyrants, it's war tall, uh, I am told. Okay, so that there is this undertone of something um, more ominous in terms of where she's come from. Uh, checking out me history alternates between two structures and there's two different fonts. The first one is repeated by the phrase Dem Tell Me to indicate the white version of history and that is written mostly in rhyming couplets with triplets or quatrains. Now, by um, outlining the two different structures through font, we have a clear difference between the history he is being taught, the white history, and the history he longs to hear about, which is the black history. And irregular stanzas allows the lessons which are important to him to stand out. So the lessons about Mary Seacole, um, the, the lessons about um, her being a healing star, they stand out further because the stanzas are in different fonts and are irregular. The rhyming couplet could, re could represent and, and further heighten this difference and this divide between the black and the white people and I suppose it further supports the difference that Agard is trying to outline. Again in terms of structure the emigre uses as I said a similar amount of syllables on each line as I said it's this idea of remaining positive but there is a sense of unease. Now 
free verse I did mention, but there's alternative interpretations. Um, free verse could be the freedom of thought in the sense that this speaker remains loyal to her memory of home, regardless of the tyrants and regardless of what people have told her. But remember, this is twofold and it's almost a double edged sword because whilst she does remain loyal and independent, there is an emptiness about her as a speaker. And we know that in the simile about the um, the doll. The poem ends, as I said, with this longer stanza and it's this desperation. Um, back to checking out my history. Now, in, in checking out my history, interspersed between Dem Tell Me, Dem Tell Me, we have the stories of three black historical figures. Apologies for my pronunciation of these words. Uh, we've got Toussaint L'Overture, Nanny de Maroon and Mary Seacole. And he uses abbreviated syntax with words missed out and short lines within a regular rhyme scheme. And this slows the pace of the poem so that we listen very carefully to these famous people. And it allows us to realise that he is recalling memory, recalling culture and creating his identity now. And actually what we find out as well when the pace of the poem slows is that the lessons of these historical figures is something very powerful and something very important. Agard he is frustrated all the way through. I mean, we get that from Dem. Tell me, Dem. Tell me what Dem want to tell me. Again, apologies for me pronunciation. But his enjambment, his use of enjambment builds up his frustration and his anger. And by the end of the poem, he is infuriated um, at the way that he is being taught history and the overall treatment of black people. Language, again, I'm going to outline just some of the things we might comment on because both of these poems are quite lengthy. So there's a lot to be said. I'm just going to comment. I'm just going to comment on a few things here and then I'll show you my example paragraphs and hopefully it'll be of use. Um, the emigre. I left it as a child. Uh, mysterious, unreachable city is what we are told here, isn't it? Um, I left it as a child. And the speaker is recollecting the past, the past that she can never return to. The worst news. When she says that, we get, uh, as I say, the vocabulary that depicts a war-torn country under the control of a brutal government. Um, if the speaker's memories are of, ch of childhood, perhaps, then we have the conflicting and harsh reality of the adult world versus the fanciful, almost made-up world of a child. So in the emigre, we have another thing at conflict. It's not just her now versus her home. And, and her new memories and her old memories but it's also the adult world versus the child world and the difference between the two and as I said one's a little bit embellished and fanciful and the other one is is harsh and uh, realistic as I said before the refrain or the repetition depending on the terminology you've been taught in sunlight um is throughout we get this idealised notion, it's like a dream-like scenario where her home and her memory is always sunny and positive. But this is followed on with the mentions of dark and death um, throughout the poem. So there's an implication there that her memories are not as ideal as she presents, or as she would, uh, she would like us to think. And there is a sense that her relationship with home is actually threatening in some way or her memories are threatened by actually what she is told about her country. In Agard then, in Checking Out My History, he uses variations in spelling to really emphasise Caribbean dialect, especially replacing the with de in Dem Tell Me. And this stresses the importance of this idea that he has to carve out his own identity. And actually what that does, if you think about the free verse in the emigre, where she was remaining independent and loyal to her home, this is Agard re remaining loyal and independent um, and standing up for his culture and his identity. Um, and as we know, the repetition of Dem Tell Me creates uh, almost a sense of rhythm and this unity of him and his culture. Um, also, in checking out my history, in the Dem Tell Me sections, the poet refers to nursery rhyme characters such as Robin Hood and the cow jumping over the moon. And obviously these um, are non-historical. And he even says 1066 and all that. And that might appear like a historical reference, but actually it isn't. He is citing a humorous book that was published in 1930 that made a parody of the histories of England. So he's mocking 
what he's been told, uh, taught about the history of England. So he's been ta taught about Robin Hood. He's been taught about the cow and the moon, nursery rhymes. He's been taught about this parody. So there's a suggestion that the version of history taught to the poet isn't accurate. And even worse than that, they have completely left out black history, black people, what they have suffered. And what we realise is this story about Robin Hood and this story about a cow jumping over a moon is totally irrelevant. Back to the emigre then. Cannot break my original view is a, is a huge metaphor which I'm going to detail in my um, example answer because it shows us that for her, the memories of childhood won't change regardless of what she's told. Um, and that is a little bit, I suppose, supported with bright-filled paperweight. And this metaphor compares her memories to her paperweight. Now, if you look at the adjective bright, that's positive. And we're going to be able to compare that to checking out my history when he uses um, ideas of light, positivity through beacon and fire. Um, there's a suggestion that she's connected to home. However, the, I suppose, irony of paperweight is a paperweight holds things down. So we actually have this negative implication that she is being held down or held back by her memories. She can't experience anything new. Or she can't go on to live in this new place where she's been re relocated because she's held down. It almost sounds like a burden. There once was a country, so the country's left anonymous and therefore it becomes universal. And don't forget, um, there once was a country almost sounds like a fairy tale once upon a time. And, and again, that alludes to this fanciful idea that children um, embellish. And when we look back on our childhood, we tend, we tend to think of positive memories. It may be sick with tyrants. Metaphor obviously shows us that the country is war-torn and ruined now. But she, the denial is that she chooses to ignore that, isn't it? Checking out my history, the sections on individual black historical figures. Now, what's interesting is he uses stronger imagery with natural metaphors at, to very powerful effect. We get that that Toussaint L'Overture is a thorn and a beacon. And beacon again, positivity, as I said, links to your emigre in terms of sunlight. Nanny de Maroon is linked to a mountain, a fire and a river. Mary Seacole is described in dramatic imagery as a healing star and a yellow sunrise to the patients she treats. Now, this natural imagery compared to black history shows us that it can't be avoided. Nature can't be avoided. Black history cannot be avoided. It's almost this implication that they are intertwined. Um, and all three are associated with light, beacon, firewoman, star, suggesting that they play me metaphorical roles, illuminating the poet's true historical identity, shining a light on his true identity so that he can now be who he is and who he wants to be. Um, a little bit more then on the emigre is the speaker describes recalling that child's vocabulary and compares it to a grammar that spills out like the stuffing inside it all. So the speaker will still remember every word of the language and we're told every coloured molecule. The simile that child's vocabulary I carry to you like a hollow doll opens and spills a grammar actually shows us how empty she is. So if she opens and all the grammar spills out, we are left with emptiness the emptiness of the speaker because she's not at home because she's almost filling her memories and as i said earlier the city is never identified so it's mysterious it can be it can stand for any place anyone has once loved any place we have left and and we all leave our childhood so we are all it's this idea that we are all exiles from our own childhood and and a childhood is now almost an unreachable memory that we do tend to make bright uh, and time makes the memories in the poem glow more clear, much like, as I said, our idealised embellished memories of, of childhood when we retell a story from our past. Um, repetition of dem tell me creates the tone of anger. The pronoun dem, meaning them, segregates Agard from white people and the British education system. It's if he's detached, them tell me this, them tell me that. And he dismisses British history, assuming we already know about it. And where he mocked us earlier with the cow and the cow jumping over the moon, he now knock, he now mocks us with Dick Whittington, which is a pantomime to be laughed at. So it's again, it's mocking British history. Um, we get 
the interesting metaphor of bandage up me eye with me own history. It suggests that he feels as if white people are stopping him from knowing about his culture and his race and they keep him blind. Blind me to my own identity. As I say, the bandages should help someone heal. But actually what they do here is they cause him to be blind. Um, the emigree, we've got white streets. The adject of white implies innocence. The country is innocent before the conflict. The speaker is innocent before she reaches adulthood. We get the adject of graceful, positive, positive imagery of home with the word galore. It may by now be a lie banned by the stage, but I can't get it off my tongue. It tastes of sunlight. This metaphor, as I said earlier, she tastes it as if it's in her bones, as if it's genetically a part of her. I comb its hair and love its shining eyes. The city is personified as someone very close to the speaker. The word shining links um, to the phrase of sunlight, which runs all the way through. And the line suggests the emigre spends a lot of time adoring the city and trying to improve its appearance, trying to improve perhaps what, what people think of it. And there's a sense that she spends a lot of attention on it. And the effect here is that we realise she's dependent on it. And it almost comes across as homesick. Or, or something, or someone who is homesick. Um, checking out my history, he describes black people, as I said, who were famous, and he uses emotive language through slave. And we know, obviously, that is uh, pivotal to black history. And we get images of light, as I said, the beacon and the vision. And that contrasts with the image of blindness, doesn't it? Um, the nursery rhymes suggest he's been brought up with the history and traditions of white people and British people. And, and actually what it does is it emphasises the silliness of what he's being taught at school. More emotive language and struggle, freedom and hopeful present, presents the history of black people and the struggles that they faced. The metaphor Freedom River um, is this idea that they have fought for freedom all, all of their life and it links us back to the, the word slave. Mary Sequel, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, metaphorically compared to a star and the yellow sunrise. Um, and that links her then to the wider universe and suggests light and hope and, and actually something we need because we need the sun to survive. And the poem finishes powerfully, doesn't it, with carving out my identity. And, and it sums up the whole poem. And this idea that he's going to go and find out his own history in order to feed his identity, in order to become the person he so wants to be. Don't forget, I've got individual videos for each of these poems, if that's easier to make notes. In terms of what we might write, um, this is what you might write. I'm not saying it's you have to write this. You might write this. Carol Rumens employs three stanzas in which the first two stanzas are eight lines each and the last stanza has nine lines. The longer final stanza implies that the speaker can't let go and refuses to relinquish her memories of home as she desperately clings to the taste of sunlight. Furthermore, free verse is utilised and there is a suggestion of a rhythmic pattern of five stresses per line. Arguably, this could reflect the speaker's state of mind, which though positive in many ways is also uneasy, unsettled and complex. Alternative interpretations in regards to free verse could be the speaker's sense of loyalty to her home, which could be referenced through the metaphor paperweight. Conversely, the combination of free verse with a regular rhythm contains a tone of emptiness. It appears the speaker is torn between memories and what she is told. This emptiness juxtaposes with the paperweight mentioned above and is solidified through the hollow doll simile. However, Agard alternates between two structures in Checking Out Me History, and these are marked by two different fonts. The first uses the repeated phrase Dem Tell Me to indicate the white version of history, mostly written in rhyming couplets, triplets or quatrains. The second utilises italics to emphasise the black and white history. Moreover, Agard's... Sorry, I've put Agard by accident. Agard's dismay is conveyed through, the, conveyed through the irregular stanzas which allow the lessons which were actually important to him to stand out further. And this is coupled with at times rhyming couplets which serve to symbolise the divide between the white people and black people and further supports the differences Agard is trying to outline. Interspersed throughout the poem are the stories of three black historical figures, Toussaint L'Overture, Nanny de Maroon and Mary C. Cole, told using abbreviated syntax with words missed out, shorter lines and in a regular rhyme scheme. Short lines slow the pace of the poem as we are forced to listen carefully to these famous black people and face the toils of their culture. Agard's frustration is heightened through enjambement and as the poem progresses we reach the climax of his emotion. But now, I checking out my own history, I carving out my identity. 
there's a mistake on this slide. I do apologise. I've put that sunlight is an adjective. So please remove that. That was a mistake. In the emigre, refrain is used through sunlight and this suggests that the speaker has an idealised, almost dreamlike picture of the past where it is always sunny. However, the place is not as perfect as she remembers it and vocabulary such as dark and death imply that things are not as ideal as her memories suggest. As the poem progresses, there is a sense that her relationship with the place may be threatening to her in some way. Moreover, the metaphor, bright, filled, paperweight, linked the speaker's memories to something heavy. Admittedly, the adjective bright has connotations of positivity and hope, but by very definition, a paperweight holds things down and is potentially restricting her from other experiences, or even more worryingly, the truth about her home. Also, the narrator describes recalling that child's vocabulary and compares it to a grammar that spills out like the stuffing inside it all. Interestingly, the speaker will soon remember every word of this language, every coloured molecule of it, and the simile, that child's vo vocabulary I carry tea like a hollow doll opens and spills a grammar, portrays that the speaker actually feels empty, and this contrasts with the repetition of sunlight. On the other hand, Agard uses variations in spelling to suggest Caribbean dialect, especially replacing th with d. This stresses the importance of carving out his own identity. There is repetition throughout, particularly Dem Tell Me, which creates a sense of rhythm. In the Dem Tell Me sections, the poet refers to nursery rhyme characters and other non-historical people like Robin Hood or the cow who jumped over the moon, even 1066 and all that, which might appear to be an historical reference, but is probably a sighting from a humorous book famous for its parodies of the histories of England. There is a suggestion that the version of history taught to the poet is not exactly accurate, even before you consider that black people have been completely left out. Additionally, the sections on individual black historical figures contain stronger imagery with the use of nature and natural metaphors to powerful effect. To Saint Overture is a thorn and a beacon. Nanny de Maroon is linked with a mountain, fire and rivers. Mary Seacole is described in dramatic imagery as a healing star and a yellow sunrise to the patients she treats. All three are associated with light, beacon, firewoman and star, suggesting that they play metaphorical roles illuminating the poet's true historical identity. Much like the speaker in Emigre, there is a positivity here. Perhaps both speakers are desperately clinging to their background and heritage in the hopes it won't be forgotten or lost. And Rumens supports this with the metaphor, cannot break my original view, to show that the speaker's memories will not be changed. Where Eagard concludes his poem powerfully with carving out my identity, implying that he will independently use his own history to create his identity, Rumens finishes with an image of, it, of admiration. I comb its hair and love its shining eyes. The city is personified as someone very close to the speaker. The word shining links this phrase to the theme of light that runs through the poem and can therefore be linked to checking out my history, Beacon. This line suggests the emigre spends a lot of time adoring the city and trying to improve its appearance. There's a sense in which the emigre lavers, lavishes attention on her memory of the city and the overall effect on the reader is to see that the narrator is emotionally dependent upon the city and recalling this place has become a kind of homesick compulsion. Um, I hope this has been useful to you in terms of how we might compare checking out my history, which which was a request. Um, take, as I say, take what you need. Don't forget there's individual videos for those, those two poems, which has a lot more detail um, in it. Apologies for the typing errors I made. Um, please check out my other videos. Just type Stacey Ray into YouTube. S-T-A-C-E-Y and Ray is R-E-A-Y. And massive good luck in your English literature exam.